The moon is about to go nuclear, literally. For the first time ever, China has officially backed a plan to build a nuclear reactor on the moon, and they're doing it with Russia. This isn't just a power source, it's a power shift. Together, they aim to launch the first energy system that can fuel a permanent lunar base by 2035. But why nuclear? In this video, we're diving into the tech, the geopolitics, and the game-changing implications behind this lunar power plant. So, what kind of reactor are we talking about, and why the moon? At the heart of the China-Russia plan is a nuclear reactor designed to power the International Lunar Research Station, ILRS, their joint moon base project. Announced at a summit in Shanghai with representatives from 17 countries, this isn't just a theoretical concept anymore. China officially included it in their lunar roadmap for the first time, and that's a big deal. Why is this necessary? Because the moon isn't very forgiving when it comes to energy. While solar panels can help during the day, the lunar night lasts for around 14 Earth days. That's two weeks without sunlight. Not ideal for a functioning outpost that needs continuous power to support life, run experiments, and manage communication systems. Internuclear energy, the only viable long-term solution for stable power on the moon. According to Chinese officials, the reactor would operate autonomously, deployed and installed using robotic systems. That's not science fiction. The Chang'e 8 mission in 2029 is already being designed to test construction and power delivery systems for this very purpose. And Russia brings its own specialty to the table, decades of experience in space-based nuclear technology. Think of the Soviet-era satellites powered by compact reactors. Now scale that up, make it robust enough for a lunar base, and you've got the backbone of the ILRS's energy strategy. The two countries even plan to integrate this system with large solar arrays and surface-level cables to create a hybrid energy grid on the moon. The whole setup is being designed with redundancy and efficiency in mind, so if one part fails, the station doesn't go dark. This isn't just a technical advancement. It's an energy infrastructure play, and one that will lay the groundwork for every human and robotic mission to come. Because once you can power the moon, you can start building something permanent. And now that this idea is official policy, Let's look at how it stacks up against its biggest rival. The moon is no longer just a destination. It's a battleground for influence, innovation, and infrastructure. At the center of this emerging rivalry stand two ambitious programs, China and Russia's ILRS, and the U.S., led Artemis program. While they share the goal of returning humans to the moon, their strategies and philosophies couldn't be more different. The International Lunar Research Station, ILRS, now formally backed by China and Russia, is designed to be a permanent base at the moon's south pole by 2035. What makes this especially notable is its emphasis on autonomous infrastructure, including a nuclear reactor, robotic construction systems, and hybrid power delivery combining nuclear and solar technologies. In contrast, NASA's Artemis program focuses on re-establishing human presence on the moon in the near term. The Artemis 3 mission, currently scheduled for late 2025, will land the first woman and the next man on the lunar surface. Its strategy includes building the Gateway Station in lunar orbit, modular lunar habitats, and encouraging international partnerships, with strong participation from Europe, Japan, and Canada. But China's momentum is growing. The upcoming Chang'e 8 mission in 2029 will test in-situ construction technologies and resource utilization, such as extracting oxygen from lunar soil. That sets the stage for fully building the ILRS just a few years later, with China planning its own manned lunar landing by 2030, independent of Artemis. Unlike Artemis's diplomatic approach under the Artemis Accords, ILRS presents a parallel vision where participation is determined more by geopolitical alignment than international openness. At the recent Shanghai ILRS summit, China invited countries like Pakistan, South Africa, Venezuela, and Belarus, many of whom are not participating in Artemis. The ILRS is not trying to catch up. It's building a rival ecosystem from the ground up. And the inclusion of a moon-based nuclear reactor is the clearest sign, yet that this isn't just about exploration. It's about self-sufficiency, space dominance, and the infrastructure of tomorrow. Beneath the engineering feats and scientific milestones, the ILRS project reveals a deeper, 
more strategic undercurrent, geopolitical realignment, and space. The moon isn't just a scientific frontier, it's becoming a platform for influence. And China and Russia are positioning themselves to lead an alternative space order. Their partnership didn't appear overnight. Tensions with the West, particularly after Russia's invasion of Ukraine, accelerated a shift that brought Roscosmos and CNSA closer. With Russia locked out of many Western technological partnerships due to sanctions and China rapidly advancing in space tech, their alliance became a necessity. And now, a calculated opportunity. This growing cooperation was on full display during the April 2025 ILRS summit in Shanghai where China not only confirmed its support for the nuclear reactor, but also launched the 555 Project, an ambitious initiative to bring 50 countries, 500 scientific institutions, and 5,000 researchers into the ILRS ecosystem. It's a bold move to counterbalance the Artemis program and build a broad, non-Western coalition. And some countries are responding. Current ILRS partners include South Africa, Venezuela, Belarus, Azerbaijan, and Pakistan. Nations often outside the core of NASA-led collaborations. By offering roles in lunar science, resource exploration, and now energy deployment, China is extending a new kind of invitation to the global south, join a project where you're not just a participant, but a stakeholder. Russia, meanwhile, is contributing its nuclear propulsion technology, including plans for a space tugboat, a nuclear-powered spacecraft capable of moving heavy equipment and reactor components between orbits. While still under development, this could prove crucial for assembling infrastructure in deep space. Yet the elephant in the room is military potential. While both countries describe the ILRS as a peaceful scientific endeavor, the dual-use nature of nuclear and robotic technologies can't be ignored. Energy autonomy on the moon could evolve into strategic autonomy, controlling not just power, but presence. In this new space age, infrastructure is the ultimate soft power, and ILRS is China and Russia's answer to the West dominance. The moon, once a symbol of unity, is now being divided by power lines, launch windows, and geopolitical priorities. So, what does all this mean? This isn't just a scientific leap or a tech flex. This is the dawn of lunar infrastructure warfare, and nuclear power is the first shot fired. The China, Russia's alliance to build a reactor on the moon shows the world that we've crossed a threshold. Space is no longer neutral. It's strategic. It's competitive. And the moon is the new frontier of global influence. As we watch this unfold, we're not just witnessing another space mission. We're watching the blueprint of future civilization off Earth. And the big question now is, who's going to power it? If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.